What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over a well in demand topic that I read in the comments here and there. Um, but it's going to be a technique that has multiple names in Anastasio Kali curriculum. I've dubbed it as the full circle throw. You might have heard me refer to that a lot of the times in the other videos. And I'm not going to focus so much on the setup and how we get to the full circle throw. Rather, I'm just going to work on the actual technique as well as variations of the full circle throw that we teach here. So there's two things that I need with my partner. First thing that I need is for my partner to be in what we call a submissive position. Basically what that means is I need his posture to be broken. I need to make sure he doesn't have good base so that he can't prevent this throw from happening. And it's not really a throw, it's more like a takedown or a trip. So I'm not physically picking him up and then throwing him to the ground. So there's a lot of mechanics that are necessary to make this work, but if you get it right, it's very, very effective. You can do this to people twice your size, three times your weight if you need to. Okay, so I have my partner bent over in this submissive position here. And what I want to outline is that I want to have an underhook with my left hand and I want to be hooking near my elbow, generally around his wrist. Now this can change depending on the amount of leverage you can produce, but this is the first thing I need here. I don't want to grab it with my arm here because if he just pulls his hand back really, really fast, I might lose the grip depending on how much he kind of jerks his hand up. So I'm holding it and clamping it in my elbow. So if he pulls back, I have a nice strong connection and I can use bigger muscles to keep them together. So I have an underhook with my left hand on his right arm. And then I have my right hand. Now you could frame against the neck and then you can also put your hand on the back of the head at this point in time. And this is going to be kind of like my overhook. I don't want you to put your arm over like you're going for a guillotine or something. You're just going to kind of place this on the back of his neck here. Okay. So this is going to serve as my overhook. This is going to be my underhook. I call it a full circle throw because if I just turn my partner around so you guys can see this here, I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to try to reach to my right elbow. And I want to take my right hand and I'm going to go underneath and try to reach to my left elbow. And I'm going to do that at the same time to create a full circle. Okay. So what I'm doing with a full circle is I'm stepping out 90 degrees with my left foot because I need a place for my partner to fall down. I'm going to push with my right hand, so I'm going to push his head, kind of scooping it, but eventually I'm going to push it to the ground in that space that I just created. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to bring this arm up and that's going to be flipping him. So if I do that all together, it's going to be here and they should fall right down in front of you. So it's very important whenever you fall, you have strong base, you still have connections. So you want to maintain that so you can follow up with whatever you're doing. Okay. Now, if you want it to be very mean when you do this, of course, my partner's prepared, so he's break falling. But at the same time, I've done this so many times that I can kind of control them on the way down and make sure that they don't, you know, smack down 20 times throughout the entire time of training. But in, in self-defense, in a position where I don't really care about you, I'm just going to flip you and drive you to the ground as hard as I can. Because I don't really care how you, how you fall. I just care that you end up in a submissive position on the ground, and I'm able to control you in a more dominant position if possible. Um, so when you're training with your partner and as you're still kind of learning this, the thing I always tell my students is that throwers throw and fallers fall. You don't want to try to hold on to them and then finally realize that through, because you don't really know the technique, you can't support them anymore and then you fall down with them. If you don't have any ground experience, now you're going to start wrestling on the ground and even worse, if they have ground experience, then you've entered their domain and you've kind of shot yourself in the foot. Okay, so. The regular full circle throw is done with our two hands, trying to draw in a circle from each elbow to the opposite side. Now the, there's a specific position, or rather specific uh, template that if we get to this position and I try doing this full circle, my partner's either bigger than me or stronger than me and I try to do this and he's resisting and I can't push that head. I can't get this to work. So I don't want to stretch so far up here to try to compensate that it makes it very uncomfortable for me because I'm not going to accomplish the full circle throw. So what I'm going to need to do is that I need to break this base a little lower. Okay. Cause I'm going to incorporate my legs, bigger muscles, heavier, much stronger than my arms. There's a couple of ways you can get this. You can again, frame on the side of the neck, push the head down or a very simple way you can knee their body and collapse that a little lower. So whatever height this is going to be, it's going to be in relation to how high you can bring your leg up comfortably. Because what I want to do is I want to get the back of my left leg. I want to use this kind of crease to go around the natural crease of his neck as well. So my knee is going to be above the center of his neck and my hamstring is on one side, my calf is on the other side, but I'm not exactly going to be squeezing. So I get my partner down nice and low. 
I align my body, so now I'm going to be uh, perpendicular to him instead of being, you know, standing right in front of him like this. I take my left leg, I'm going to bring it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue the full circle, but now my left leg has replaced that right arm motion. So when I kick this back and I bring his hand forward, down my partner goes again. So it's very important when you do that one, you want to make sure that when you kick, you're not just kind of kicking to the ground. You're not squeezing his head either. You're just going to kick back. And as you kick back, this leg has to shoot back and establish strong base. Okay, because remember, when we're throwing our opponent down with this particular method, I only have one leg connected to the ground. So this is a very short moment in time. After that, I need to make sure I have a strong base to accommodate them falling, securing that arm or whatever it is that I'm still holding on to, and then being able to follow up from that position. Okay? The final variation, if we have an over-under position like this, sometimes you can do it with just one hand, especially if you understand the principle of the full circle much more easier. And this is going to happen when we kind of frame from this position like this. Okay, so right now I have an underhook, but I use that same hand to overhook. So I've kind of crossed with just one hand. I'm just using my right hand to maintain the frame. Okay, so it kind of looks like this right now. So. All I'm gonna do is, this is gonna be a little bit more of like a micro full circle. I'm gonna lift up with my elbow, and when I lift up with my elbow, I'm gonna push down with my hand, and I'm gonna use that as the full circle like this, okay? Now, you can't do this if your partner is standing a little taller. So if he stands up like this, and I try to push, because the spine is stacked, it's much harder, and actually it puts a lot of pressure on my shoulder. So I need them to be relatively low. Not so low that I have to go down with them, but you can still accomplish it from that position. So when I get here, this arm that's maintaining this 90 degree frame that I created is very important because that's gonna allow me to lift this up much easier and when I push his head, bring him straight down, okay? So that one, depending on how you wanna throw him, you can reposition your body the same way, but it's very, very micro. And so usually you would use that one just to create an opening to attack or do whatever it is, draw your weapon, so on and so forth. So the principle of a full circle, just to wrap up the video, uh, because there are going to be times where your opponent is going to resist you. So what we're trying to do, okay, so if my partner is here and he puts his hand on the ground, all the way to the ground, don't let me push her. If he's not going to let me push his head, he's created that connection, okay? Really what I'm doing, and, and by the time he's at this point, it's already too late for him, I'm taking this hand and I'm flipping his body over. This arm only has a certain amount of space that it can rotate. So if I rotate it too far, that's going to flip his body and that's what brings them down, right? Sometimes, depending on your, uh, your body, or rather your opponent's body's composition or its balance, it, it might, they might fall on their butt. Sometimes they might exactly flip like a pancake and smack the ground. And that's just with that left arm. So your left arm is doing a lot of the work. That's why I said, when we get into this position, when you hook with your elbow, sometimes you might have to go a little closer because now you can drive it a little more. It depends on your opponent or your, rather your training partner. And uh, the right hand's job, the overhooking hand's job, is just simply guiding to make sure that the force you're creating or the leverage that you're creating has a pathway which is going to be down to the ground. And there's a very uh, important rule or, or rather principle that a lot of people train by and it's that where the head goes, the body must follow. So I'm guiding the head to the ground because I want the body to go to the ground and I'm creating leverage, I'm using my underhooking arm to create the drive or the energy to bring the body to the ground. So with those two things working equally uh, at the same time, then you should be able to accomplish a full circle throw, either one of the three ways that I showed you or in a kind of a variation through uh, pressure testing or application with whatever you guys train. So that's how you do the full circle throw. If you guys did enjoy, enjoy the video, make sure that you guys give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. And until next time, catch you guys there.